Hey, we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. And today we're talking about Wolfenstein Youngblood. This is Wolfenstein's all co-op affair. It's 30 bucks, it's lower priced, and it's completely two player or you and an AI experience. It also like crazy jumps ahead of the events of Wolfenstein 2 New Colossus, 19 years in fact in an alternate 1980s where the Nazis still won and you play as BJ's twin daughters. BJ has disappeared and a lead brings them to Nazi occupied France. They hijack a helicopter and some of those kick-ass ancient power suits and go nuts and that's where the chaos ensues and that's when you jump into the game. A very different game, to be honest. A game I wasn't expecting. Even after I got to play this a little bit at E3, I had no idea this was going to be such a departure for the series, structurally. Some players aren't going to mind, other players are going to be completely offended. In short, for me personally, it's not the worst game or anything, but it's not at all what I wanted from a Wolfenstein game. Now, let me explain how the game works. Wolfenstein Youngblood consists of a hub similar to the previous games. You know, there are little characters walking around, there's diversions, there's an arcade machine, uh, opportunities for quests and side quests, but there are tons of these quests and they feel like giant lists you check off because you go venture out into one of a few open environments and revisit them. And they're pretty large with lots of twisty turny paths and are populated with random enemies and scenarios. There are story beats, but you find yourself shooting through things and taking out commandants or clicking on a computer terminal that just don't really matter. And enemies even respawn if you turn around and come back. None of it really matters because you'll likely do it all over again in a similar way to grind for the in-game currency to strengthen and level up your character. Yeah, your character can unlock more health, more defense, the ability to hold more bullets, a few powers, the stuff you'd expect. But your guns, once again, can also be customized, although it's way more significant here. Guns start off standard and can be kitted out to have drastically higher damage rates, ammo count, rate of fire, stuff like that. Uh, this is because enemies straight up are total bullet sponges. Take on a quest that's too high a level for your under leveled character and you're gonna turn a corner and find a bunch of enemies with big chunks of a health bar that's constantly visible above them that you have to then whittle down before you can start doing the standard Wolfenstein good shooting where you blow people's arms off. It absolutely 100% feels like shooting something in a looter shooter, like shooting at enemies in Destiny or The Division. You're watching that health bar go down and, you know, getting a little frustrated. This can mechanically be interesting, it, you know, it can be, but it, it's not at all what I wanted from a Wolfenstein game. A Wolfenstein game where the great shooting is distracted by basically the grind. I love RPG systems and I love when they're added to many a game, but when it impacts the feel and the flow of gameplay like it does here, I'm not really into it. Now, I also want to be clear because some people are going to come at me with this because like there were bullet sponge enemies and customizable weapons in the previous games. Like there were the elites that took a lot of shots to down. But in this game, it becomes almost every enemy and like with the leveling up designed around it all, it, it was just a tad bit more off putting. That's all. The flow of encounters completely changes. And because of this, it just got repetitively a bit more quickly for me. This can be a bit more fun when you're playing with a friend, though. I will say that you have someone to talk to and goof off with and coordinate which enemy you're gonna spray bullets into, but when you're playing alone, eh, I don't know. Certain weapons will take down armor quicker for different enemies too, so that shakes up your weapon use. But still, I'm just not a fan of the way it all feels, you know? Which is a shame, because the shooting is still, at its core, so well designed. Guns are big and loud and clanky and they look and feel really cool and the movement and abilities are still tight with this cool double jump that is really important to the actual core of the game here. Again, these RPG elements just didn't really work for me, but it might work for you. It's pretty much a matter of taste and I wanna reiterate that. Especially because the story and all the other Wolfenstein stuff is still pretty great. It does take a little bit of a backseat now since you're playing these more repetitive missions that can sometimes feel the same. But when you do finally get far enough to get another cutscene, it's always fun and interesting and does the great thing that modern Wolfenstein does where it plays this great game of like cat and mouse with serious themes and extremely goofy, fun, dumb stuff. Here, it definitely leans on the goofy side a little bit with the younger characters and it totally works. The sisters are entertaining. They exchange dialogue fairly often, even if it's just like dumb teenager pumping themselves up type stuff, but it still feels unique. 
and pretty charming. There's goofy elevator load time scenes, lots of high-fiving and gore. And BJ, thankfully, still gets some screen time, thankfully. And the whole alternate 80s Nazi future is interesting to look at. Really, I'm just so happy that the Wolfenstein charm is still there. Now there is less of it because the moment to moment gameplay is simplified and boiled down like there's less big action set pieces, uh, there feels like less story and cutscenes overall, but thankfully like there is some cool shit still, like interesting and compelling characters, uh, violence, incredible scenery, and a sense of scope and scale, you know, stuff like that. Pretty much things you would still come to expect from this type of game from them. One thing I do like in the gameplay is the ability to buff one another, like there's a cooldown, but if you're at least in range with your other sister, you can hit this button and either buff yours and theirs health or armor for a temporary boost. It's a great dynamic and creates a little like ebb and flow in ways of the gameplay that I didn't expect at all. Plus, you can pick the little animation you do when you buff, like give a thumbs up, throw the devil horns, do a fist bump type of thing. Like, you can unlock these and different suit skins and helmets, and there's a surprisingly big list of ways to customize. I really enjoyed giving my guns, specifically, the moon skin and then making them really cool all red and white. This does get into the in-game currencies, which is all fine for progression, but you can spend real-world money to get in-game currency specifically to buy skins and very limited temporary boosters. You can't pay to get actual level up and ability points or you know get better guns but it's still a very slippery slope here. To me personally for now it's kind of harmless but it does seem primed for a potential update for more microtransactions down the line. Will they do it? They said they won't. I hope not. I'm glad it's simple right now. If you want to upgrade your character abilities for now you still have to earn it the old-fashioned way. But the co-op works well. It can be pretty seamless if you drop out and the AI takes over. Uh, you can't command them, like you can't give them little commands. That sucks, uh, but they're not terrible. They'll stick around while matchmaking happens and then a player can pop in. Or, uh, of course, you can play with someone on your friends list. If you buy the deluxe edition into the game for like 40 bucks US instead of 30 bucks, you get the buddy pass. This is a thing that allows a friend to download and play without actually having to buy the game. They have to download the trial version and then link their account and they don't earn trophies or anything, but it still works. And I think the price is fair for it. I'm really gonna give Bethesda props for this, really. Also, one more thing, even though the game has moved to more open, explorable environments with the context of giving the game more padding and more to grind, I still really like the level design. Arcane helped with some of the development of this game, and I don't know if they specifically worked on the look of the maps or whatever, but hot damn, they feel like Dishonored because they're so vertical, and I really liked exploring because they really took the time to make lots of hidden areas and tons of interiors and rooftops with little details and stuff. When I was playing with a friend who was down to take his time and take things slow and search for items and coins, it was great. And the game is still a looker too. Vast scenery when you get to high points is really great. The gore and gun detail effects are still there, characters are fun to look at, and at least on the PC version here that we captured, uh, the game does move pretty damn fast. But ultimately, Wolfenstein Youngblood is not my favorite Wolfenstein game. It's of a decent length, it's fine as a nice expansion pack, and the core shooting is still there, but the newer light RPG shooter elements kind of made me and my co-op friend get bored of the game quickly after the first few hours. I was totally shocked that this happened because I love this series. For a Wolfenstein game, that to me, like getting bored like that is a damn shame. Some people, again, might have more fun grinding out some Nazi killing missions with friends, but I like more of a core singular adventure that isn't trying to add elements of very different games. I can always embrace new mechanics and games, old dogs, new tricks, there's plenty of games that add in RPG elements that I love, but for me it just, it didn't work here. But of course, you know, that's my take. This is a before you buy. I give you some pros, some cons, and some personal opinion, and now I want to hear yours down in the comments. This game does seem pretty mixed. It seems like nobody absolutely hates it, but some people are just not a fan of the changes. Then I've talked to some other people that are downright loving it and having a good time, but I think that's what these videos are for, starting a conversation. The more we can do this and the more we discuss like things we don't like in games, I, I think that can actually strengthen and make us appreciate more what we do like about games. So I want to hear from you guys down in the comments, man. Like, what do you think? Are you a Wolfenstein fan? Are you a diehard? 
what console are you playing this on if you did pick it up let me know let me know it's how it's performing but let me know if you're having a good time with a friend or a random or just the ai let's talk anything wolfenstein youngblood down in the comments we'll be there but if you enjoyed this video and maybe learned something and you appreciate before you buys clicking the like button is the best way you can help us out we really genuinely appreciate it and if you're new consider subscribing and hitting that notification button because we're putting out videos every single day but as always thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time